opinions and stories around the game we love told by your favorite storytellers stay up to date with all things cricket subscribe to crick buzz's youtube channel and press that bell icon now the first semi-final will be played against Australia versus West Indies here in Wellington and it's time to preview it now here on Crick Buzz. Well, these two teams have already met here in Windy Wellington and Australia came out on top. They were able to dismiss the West Indies for a mediocre score of just 130 odd. And for Australia, it was Elise Perry at the top, three for 22. And then in reply, Australia had no issues in chasing down those runs with Rachel Haynes finishing at 83, not out. The big question though, and one that no doubt the West Indians will be waiting for, is Elise Perry fit? Will she come in and play the semi-finals? If she does, will she bowl? Simply because Elise Perry loves taking West Indian wickets. She picked up three wickets the last time they just played here in Wellington. Also, we've got to remember 2013, what she was able to do on one leg in the final of the World Cup. So they'll be hoping that Elise Perry isn't fit. We have heard from the Australian camp that she hasn't been able to train for the last week and they may consider her just as a batter. If that's the case, I think the West Indies have a bit of a sigh of relief. The head-to-head -head battle between these two sides is basically Australia on top. They've only lost on one occasion, and that was the 2013 World Cup Super Sixes match, but they were able to return the feat in the final when Australia won. Whilst the West Indies have also had success against Australia in the T20 World Cup final, they'll draw on that because a number of players know that they can beat Australia on any given day. I actually think the ace for the West Indian side is Hayley Matthews. She seems to be the one that drives everything because she's also bowling 10 overs. She's opening the batting, she's fielding in slips. So she plays a crucial role and she has the ability to go really quick at the top of the innings. Deandra Dotton, we know what she can do. We've seen it before, I've seen it before. But at the moment, I feel like it's Hayley Matthews with the bat that is the barometer for the West Indian side. She does well they do well. So watch out for her. The ace on the flip side for the Australian team is, it's a tough one because there are so many match winners. I would probably like to focus on Meg Lanning. She got out for a duck on her birthday, her 30th birthday, but she also scored an unbeaten 130 odd against South Africa on the same, same ground. She loves playing against the West Indian side. She averages over 69 against them and at a pretty good rate. And she knows that this is a crucial match. She is one player that really did hurt in the 2017 semi-final loss. And ever since then, she has been focused on this one trophy. So look out for Lanning because I think she'll put her hand up in this crucial match. In terms of the playing 11, Australia, let's take a look at them. Elise Perry, if she's fit and available, she comes in, probably Annabelle Sutherland sits out. If she doesn't, I think they'll keep the same side. And uh, given the fact that there's so many all-rounders within that Australian team, it won't worry about the overs potentially from Perry. And even from a batting perspective, when you have a Beth Mooney who can slot into any position from one through to six, uh, they certainly feel secure. And we saw that Annabelle Sutherland can do the job as well with the bat in hand. As for the West Indian side, Anissa Muhammad, their leading ODI wicket taker, sitting second at the moment in the all time uh, list. She, I don't think will be selected. Uh, she was not selected against the Australian side because her performance against the Australians isn't that great. And we've seen this West Indian team pick based on conditions and opposition. So Anissa Mohammed doesn't get an opportunity to come in. Karishma Ramarak will come in as the off spinner and a young offie who actually turns it well should be really good. Tip of the day for both sides. 
Semi-finals. I guarantee you that the Australian team will be more nervous about the semi-final than the final. You want to be part of the big stage. You want to get yourself into that finals. Australia has been expected to be in that final. So there will be added pressure on them. Whereas the West Indians, we saw the jubilation, the video that went viral of when they saw India lose to South Africa. They are pinching themselves. They thought they were on the plane home, but they're here. They stay in New Zealand, they stay in Wellington, and they've got every opportunity to take out the number one side. They have done it in the past. We saw that in the 2016 T20 World Cup at Eden Gardens, and it only takes one or two of their players to get going. And I get a sense that they have a free hit. There is nothing to lose. So tip for the West Indian side, play with freedom. No one's expecting you to win, and I mean that in the nicest way possible. Enjoy your cricket. When you guys are up and about and you're dancing and you're smiling and you're having fun, you play such an exciting brand. I can't wait to see. As for the Australians, be wary of the West Indian team. They're coming for you. There is nothing to hold them back right now. You guys have been the front runners throughout this competition. So you're gonna to have to weather the storm. There will be a storm brewing for the West Indians. They've got the ability to come at you hard, but you've got to stick with them and stick as long as possible because this game it has the making of an absolute blockbuster. Who has the edge? Has to be the Australian team. Because throughout this World Cup, Whilst they still haven't played the perfect game, they have been challenged. England challenged them in the chase. Bangladesh challenged them with the ball. And yet they've still found players to stand up. So I get the sense that this team has been building, building for a long period of time. Core group of players have really driven what Australian cricket should be known for, what their brand is, and has filtered that down into the domestic level. And that's why we're seeing players like an Annabelle Sutherland and Alana King come in and make such an impact. I think Australia will win. They've got the ability, they've got the skill, but can they keep their composure?